Hello everyone and welcome. Consider this a bit of an amendment to the original video. Most of this was recorded about two weeks ago, so in a minute my voice is going to sound a bit different, just so you know. And there's also one thing I forgot to mention in this video. We are going to be setting up Minecraft Forge, our, our development environment in Eclipse. And what I forgot to mention is that you need a JDK, or Java Development Kit. So before you get started, go download an IDE, an Integrated Development Environment, such as Eclipse, and a JDK, the, the latest version, which I think is 1.8, update 45, should be fine. And I think the video will walk you through everything else you need to know. Alright, so let's go ahead and get to the main video. Hello everyone and welcome. I have had a few requests to make a mod making series, so I'm going to give that a shot today. Actually, I was just about to reset up my development environment because I moved it to a different drive and went around, finally got around to deleting the old folder and apparently there were some things messed up, so I'm just going to start over. So, before... I do anything. I'm going to say I'm going to be doing this for 1.7.10. And if you're looking to develop for 1.8, most of the things that I, I say in here will apply to some degree or another. I recommend starting with 1.7.10, honestly. 1.8 is not fun to work with at all. And I've heard that a lot of mod developers are planning on skipping it entirely. And personally, I don't want to touch 1.8 again anytime soon. I've gone back to 1.7. And before I go into any instructions, I want to say this is not a programming tutorial. You should already be at least somewhat familiar with Java or something similar, C++, C Sharp. Programming in general would be fine, but something that's close to Java would be best. So go go learn Java if you haven't already. There's plenty of excellent free resources just everywhere on the internet. Uh, when I was 14, I downloaded a book on Java and it was two years, I went through two years of college without learning anything in any computer science courses. So there's plenty of good resources out there. All right, so this is one of my favorite websites, files.minecraftforge.net. You want to go here for downloading Forge, and we're going to hover over 1.7 and select 1.7.10. So this will give us either the latest or the recommended version of Forge. Personally, I'm, I use recommended. If you're going to be doing anything with fluids, you'll probably want to go with latest because there was a fluid update in 10.13.3. But I'm going to go ahead and get the recommended, and I've actually already downloaded this. So you want the source. So just click on that. It'll take you through this ad focus type link. And you just have to wait a few seconds. I do have an ad blocker here. Then just click skip and download that file to wherever you want it to go. Or I guess you could just open it. Uh, I normally use Chrome. This is Firefox. Okay, so now that you've got that downloaded, and I forgot to open that. Okay, so what you're going to want to do now is create a folder for your development environment. You could call it dev or something like that. Mine is called Abyss because of the original name of Silence Gems. And in this folder, you're going to want to create a folder to store Forge. So Forge... 1.7.10, just call it Forge, anything like that. What you name it doesn't really matter. And create a folder called Source. So just these two folders are everything you should need. Everything else is just stuff that I've created and thrown in for one reason or another. Okay, so we're going to go into the newly created Forge folder. And we're going to extract all of our files into here. Okay, and we can close that zip file. That's no longer needed. All right, so there is a readme file here, and if you take a look at this, it will tell you the basics of how to set it up. And let me see, where where is it? One thing I don't understand is why it recommends this command in particular, set up dev workspace. That is, I do not recommend using that command. 
And the reason for that is you will not get any decompiled Minecraft code if you do that. Okay, so what I've just done is I've hold, I hold shift and right click, then open command window here. That will open a command prompt that's already directed at the directory that you're in. So now we're going to run Gradle W, set up decomp workspace. Not set up dev workspace, set up decomp workspace, as in decompiled. Okay, so run that command. That'll take a little while to run. Then we'll have one more command to run here, so don't close the command prompt window after it's done. So for this episode, I'm just going to go through setting up everything. I'm going to be using Eclipse. Uh, I believe another in popular option is IntelliJ. But I've already... I've always used the clips. I don't have any particular problems with it, so we're going to do that. Okay, so we have run the setup decomp workspace successfully. I'm going to do Gradle W Eclipse. And I think if you're running IntelliJ, you want to do Gradle W Ideal, like that. Okay, so we should be done with this here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Eclipse. And you're going to want to put it into this directory. You extracted a folder called Eclipse into your Forge directory, and you want to point it at that folder here. So click OK. Alright, so we now have one project in here called Minecraft. And just to make sure that we got everything set up correctly, and actually I'm going to have to reset up Eclipse now. So let's see, we can go into Reference Libraries, Forge Source, and this contains all the source code for Minecraft and Forge and such. So net.minecraft.block.block is the class that represents blocks. If you're wanting to create the, a new block for your mod, you're going to want to extend block or some class that extends block itself. And you can go through these files, read them, and maybe not everything will make sense to you. It doesn't all make sense to me, but if you can understand the vanilla classes, to some degree, you'll have a better chance at modding. Okay, so now we want to create our own project. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, re-import one of mine right now, but the process is pretty similar. Actually, let's go through a new project first. So I'm going to go back to the source folder from earlier. And this is where I'm going to be keeping all the code for my mods and I have this organized according to Minecraft version you can do it however you like okay so I'm going to go into my 1710 folder and I had to make a brief cut so if it sounds awkward that's why I had to clean up this folder a little bit so these are all the mods I've created for 1710 we've got silence gems pets super multi drills and the joke communist creepers mod that I used in the Season 2 of my Let's Play. Let's not talk about that one. Alright, so create a folder with the same name as your mod, and I recommend not using any spaces or special characters because, uh, well, it doesn't really matter, but I like to keep it the same as the mod ID, which we'll get to probably in the next episode. Okay, so inside the folder for the mod, you're going to want to create a folder called Common or source, whichever you prefer, and then a folder called resources. And the other stuff we will get to eventually, or it'll be created by some program for you. In the case of .git, that's because I'm using GitHub, which I will probably cover setting up GitHub as well. The common folder is what's going to hold all of your source code. I have a folder called Thomcraft in here because I do use the Thomcraft API a little bit in gems, not much. And then this folder contains all the source code for gems, which you can view on GitHub if you're curious. All my mods are on GitHub. Uh, well, I don't think this one is. Okay, so again, you want common and resources. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the Package Explorer, right-click somewhere empty, go to New, Java Project. 
and we are going to call you Silent Gems. And the default location is okay, that's not where we're keeping our source code, we're going to take care of that later. Execution JRE, I don't think this matters too much, you could use Java 7, Java 8. Okay, so I think all you need to change here is just the project name, so let's click on next. And it's created a little source for folder for us already. I'm going to go ahead and just remove from build path. I don't want to use that. Now we go to project. Click on add. Check Minecraft. And click OK. And for gems, I also need NEI. This isn't something you'll need unless you need to hide items in NEI or something like that. Okay, so I've got a copy of NEI source. Is that what I want? No, that's not what I want. Okay, just downloading a fresh copy of NEI right here. So we want 1.7.10. And I think I will grab the latest version. So I want the dev version. And I was hoping it would ask me where to save that, but apparently it did not. I don't use Firefox very often, so it's probably not configured correctly. And I'll go ahead and grab the latest source as well. So I'll be able to actually view the source code of NEI. Okay, and can I just drag these over like there? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to open up the dev version of NEI. And again, you don't necessarily need NEI. Just depends on what you're doing. Okay, so I think I've got everything I need right here. So I'm going to delete that source folder it created. And really quickly, I'm going to assign the source code for NEI so I can view that if I need it. So external location, external file, select the source. And that should be all we need to be able to view NEI source code. Yes, okay. So now what about the source code for our mod? Okay, so I'm gonna right click on the project, go to new and folder. And I'm gonna call that common. I'm going to click on advanced, link to an alternate location. And I'm going to click on Browse and select that. Okay, so our development folder, source, 1710, Silence Gems, common. Okay. And I'll go ahead and just copy that string for the next folder. And click Finish. Now we're going to do the same thing for the Resources folder. Advanced, uh, link to alternate location, paste that in, change common to resources. Okay, now we need to actually tell Eclipse that these folders are for source code and the like. So we're going to say new source folder. And we have to select the common folder. And this seems a bit convoluted honestly I feel like this could be streamlined a little bit but whatever okay and do the same thing for resources even though it won't have any actual code in it that'll be for textures and other resource files okay so now we should be able to see there's the localization file we could see the source code for the mod and so on Okay, and just to recap that, let's go ahead and create our new project. So let's call it Tutorial. And in here I want a common folder and a resources folder. Okay, new project, new Java project. Let's call it tutorial mod. I think I just call that folder tutorial. Let's actually change that just for the sake of consistency. Okay, so next, remove that source folder. It requires Minecraft. 
And I'm not going to import any eye. Because we probably don't need it at this point. Alright, delete the source folder. New folder. And we're going to link to an alternate location and I'll just type that in by hand. Tutorial mod common. Okay. New folder. Link to alternate location. Tutorial mod resources. Okay, and then new source folder. You have to right click on common to select common. I don't know why it makes it you, you select it here if you have to right click on the folder for it to work, but that's just how Eclipse is. So right click on resources, new source folder, browse resources. And we're set up. These folders don't contain anything yet. We're going to be getting to that on the next episode. We'll begin setting up the mod. And then get to adding things. Alright, and there's just one more little thing that we need to do before I forget. I'm going to go up here to this little icon. This is debug. I'm going to click on the triangle next to it. And I'm going to click on... Oops, that is not what I meant to do. That is how you actually launch Minecraft. I meant to configure it. Because if we cl just click debug now, we're not actually loading in our mods. So I'm going to go to debug configurations. And click on client. Go to class path. I'm going to click on Minecraft. I'm going to add projects. And I want to add all these mods. So just select your, your mod or mods. And I'm going to uncheck these two boxes right here. Click OK, so those mods should be good to go. And if you're going to be doing a server test as well, click on server. And do the same thing for this. Click apply. And I don't know why client and server shows up twice. But if we launch the... But if we launch Minecraft now, it should show at least gems and multi-drills. Since we don't actually have anything in the tutorial mod uh, folder, it's not actually finding it as a mod yet. There's no code. Okay, and let's go ahead and get rid of that music. Thank you. In the next video, we'll go into actually writing some code for our mod so that it will actually do something. And... I think I would like this mod to add maybe one type of ore that we can smelt into some kind of ingot and then maybe, maybe make tools out of it. Something simple like that. And then we can add on more complex things as we go on. If you have anything that you would like to see in particular, let me know and I'll see what I can do. I will get to those ideals whenever the time is appropriate for them. So as always, if you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to do that so you can keep up with this series. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.